Oh, sorry. Today I'm here to talk about leptospirosis in cattle. Um, leptospirosis is a zoonotic disease caused by the bacteria Leptospira. Um, it's commonly known as lepto. There are various serovars that include Harjo, Pomana, Canicola, Icto, Hemogere, and Gryptotyphosa. Wow, you get the prize for the longest words I've Harjo ever seen. Harjo and Pomona are the two main serovars that infect cattle. Um, rodents are the most common carriers of leptospirosis. Since it's zoonotic, that means that it normally exists in animals, but it can also affect humans. Cerevars are subdivisions of species of bacteria that are distinguishable from other strains. Uh, Leptospira harjo bovis. This is the only uh, host adapted leptospirosis cerevar in cattle and can infect animals at any age. This includes young calves to mature cattle. Host adapted means the ability of pathogen to circulate and cause disease in a particular host population. Infections with this bacteria usually produce a carrier state in the kidneys and is associated with long-term urinary shedding and persistent infections of the reproductive tract. Transmission. Infected urine, placenta, or milk are common transmitters of leptospira bacteria. Direct contact must be made with the infected material for, transfer to, for transmission to occur. Urine is the most common form of transmission, as you can see in this photo over here. Transmission can occur venereal or transplacental. Venereal means sexual transmission. Transplacental means passed on through the placenta. Bacteria can enter the body through exposed wounds, mucous membranes in the mouth, eyes, and reproductive and gastrointestinal tracts. Incubate, incubation can last anywhere from 4 to 20 days. It circulates in the blood for 7 days. Leptospheres can replicate in the kidneys, liver, lungs, genitals, and central nervous system. The most common problems with leptospirosis are in the dairy industry. Dairies often have leptospheric contaminations in their environment. Feeder calves are the largest carriers in large operations since they are known to suckle on the sheaths and scrotums of other calves in the feed yard. Leptospira often favor moist environments and warmer temperatures and can survive extended periods in stagnant water and pits. Some serovars have been known to survive up to six months. Other problems include open herds, using shared bulls, mixed grazing with sheep, shared grazing with common sources of water. Um, clinical signs are infertility, abortion, poor milk yield, jaundice, hemoglobinuria, which is right here, which means blood in the urine, fever, and anemia. Most problems go unnoticed um, long-term, which really can um, lead to big um, economic loss. Uh, their treatment for leptospirosis is um, antibiotic therapy, often oxytetracycline, and the um, approved, one of the approved drugs is called Tetrader. And then prevention of leptospirosis. Vaccination is important to protect herds from infection. Vaccination should be given four to six weeks before the breeding season begins. A five-way lepto vaccine is recommended to protect against all five serovores. Um, pictured here is lepto firm five. Um, and also while vaccinations are important, keeping a clean environment is also very important to keep the bacteria to a minimum. There are my sources. Excellent. Perfect.